At exactly 11.47 p.m. on October 18th, 2025, Hawaii's night sky erupted in fire. Lava jets soared 2,000 feet high, casting a glow visible from 80 miles away and triggering a roar like thunder across the island. Scientists had never seen anything like it. Over 200,000 residents suddenly found themselves living above a volcano system more dangerous and far more interconnected than anyone realized. If this eruption was just the beginning, what comes next for everyone living in the shadow of Kilauea? Night on the big island is usually quiet, broken only by the sound of waves and the wind through the trees. But on October 17th, 2025, the silence shattered. At 8.05 p.m., the first jet of lava burst from Kilauea's north vent, launching molten rock hundreds of feet into the air. Within minutes, a second vent to the south ignited, and the two fountains began to climb. By 9.30, both columns had soared past a thousand feet. The air shook with a deep rolling thunder that never seemed to fade. Windows rattled in homes from Volcano Village to Pahoa. Dogs barked, car alarms triggered, and some residents stepped outside, drawn by an orange glow pulsing through the night like a second sunrise. The south vent kept rising. At 10 p.m., it reached nearly 1,500 feet, a record for the current eruption cycle. The north vent held steady at 1,100 feet. The fountains didn't just light up the summit. Reports came in from Hilo, 30 miles away, of a sky so bright it cast shadows at midnight. Some said it looked like the world's largest bonfire. Others compared the roar to a freight train barreling through the darkness, a sound that pressed against doors and walls, impossible to ignore. People watched from their driveways, phones in hand, trying to capture the impossible scale. In Hawaiian Paradise Park, a father held his son's hand as they stared at the orange columns, speechless. In Pahoa, a teacher texted her neighbors, it's like the sun came up on the wrong side of the world. The eruption wasn't just a spectacle. Fine ash drifted downwind, dusting cars and rooftops, sneaking in through window cracks. The air smelled sharp, sulfur and heat. The taste of rock turned to vapor. For some, the ground trembled underfoot, a reminder that this was not a distant fireworks show, but a force rewriting the land beneath them. Inside the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, scientists watched real-time feeds as the fountains held their height, fluctuating between 1,000 and 1,500 feet for hours. The data coming in confirmed what their eyes could barely believe. This was not the slow, oozing lava Kalawia was known for. This was raw power, a vertical torrent of fire visible from towns farther than anyone expected. The eruption pressed on into the early morning the sound and light refusing to fade. For thousands across the island, sleep was impossible. Every rumble, every flicker of orange on the horizon was a reminder that the ground itself was awake and that nothing about this night would be forgotten. Kilauea dominates the southeastern third of Hawaii's Big Island, a volcanic shield sprawling over 550 square miles. Its slopes are not wilderness, they're home to nearly 200,000 people. Neighborhoods, schools, clinics, and grocery stores all rest on ground built by past eruptions. The town of Pahoa lies just 15 miles from Kilauea's most active vent. Hilo, the island's largest city with a population of 45,000, sits 30 miles away. These are not distant spectators. They are communities woven into the living geology of the island where daily life unfolds atop layers of cooled lava and volcanic ash. The risk is not theoretical. In 1960, a river of lava from Kilauea's East Rift Zone swept through the village of Kapoho, erasing it from the map. 400 homes vanished beneath a black field of stone. Decades later, in 2018, the volcano's Lower East Rift Zone erupted again. This time, over 700 structures were lost. Houses, farms, entire blocks, forcing families to leave with only what they could carry. The damage reached $800 million, a staggering toll for an island community. Even so, the tallest fountains in that eruption reached about 300 feet. The events of October 2025, with fountains five times higher, raised the stakes to a level few here had imagined possible. 
The footprint of the volcano shapes everything. Roads curve around old flows. Power lines cross barren fields of rock. Some neighborhoods are built on land that was still cooling within living memory. In places like Hawaiian Paradise Park, families have learned to read the subtle signs, the way the ground feels underfoot, the scent of sulfur on the breeze. But no warning system, no matter how advanced, can erase the uncertainty that comes with living this close to an active volcano. Each eruption rewrites the boundaries of safety and risk. People remember the maps from 1960 and 2018, the lines showing where lava once flowed and where it might again. For new arrivals, the history is a warning. For longtime residents, it is part of daily life. The knowledge that everything homes, schools, roads can be swept away in a matter of hours is never far from mind. Yet the island grows because of these eruptions. New land forms at the ocean's edge, black and steaming as lava meets water. The same force that threatens lives and property also creates the ground beneath every house and every playground. On the Big Island, destruction and creation are inseparable. The people who live here know this truth better than anyone. The volcano gives and the volcano takes away. Every family, every business, every community lives with that reality, never sure what the next eruption will bring, only certain that the land itself is still alive and changing. Sensors buried deep beneath Kilauea's summit began to record the first signs of unrest long before any lava broke the surface. In early July 2025, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory seismic team noticed a pattern that set off alarms. Earthquake swarms, not at the usual shallow depths, but clustered between 8 and 10 kilometers down. These were not the routine tremors that come with minor magma movement. Over the next three months, more than 2,400 earthquakes shook the ground beneath the summit. The pattern was relentless, sometimes dozens in a single day the epicenters mapping out a restless chamber far below the surface. Dr. Margaret Chen, chief seismologist at HVO, pulled up the latest hypocenter plots on her monitor. Each red dot marked a quake, and by September, the clusters had thickened into dense clouds stretching deep below Kilauea. In an internal report dated September 22nd, she wrote, the depth and frequency of these events are clear evidence of a major influx from the mantle. We are seeing something fundamentally different from previous cycles. Beyond the tremors, the ground itself was swelling. Tilt meters and GPS stations ringed around the caldera logged a steady, accelerating uplift. By mid-August, the summit was rising at a rate of 4 centimeters per month, triple the background rate observed during Kalawia's quieter years. This wasn't a slow, gentle inflation. It was a measurable, month-on-month -month heaving of the entire summit region. The data poured in. Each week, the crater floor crept higher, the tilt meters registering sharp upward swings. Instrument logs from August 16th and September 10th captured the acceleration in real time, with field crews confirming the readings against physical benchmarks set on the caldera rim. The seismology crew worked late nights cross-checking the earthquake depths and ground movement against historical records. The numbers told a story of pressure building deep underground. In staff meetings, Chen's team debated whether the magma was pooling in a new reservoir or if a direct surge from the mantle was forcing its way upward. Either way, the system was primed. The ground was straining, the summit rising, and the deep earthquakes were a drumbeat no one in the observatory could ignore. By early October, the evidence was impossible to dismiss. The volcano was shaking and swelling with a force not seen in years. What remained unclear was how much energy was gathering below and when or how it would break free. Sulfur dioxide readings climbed off the charts as October approached. On a normal day, Kilauea's vents release about 1,500 tons of sulfur dioxide into the air, enough to leave a sharp tang on the wind but nothing out of the ordinary for the island's monitoring teams. By the second week of October, those numbers had soared to over 6,000 tons per day. The spike wasn't just unusual, it was the highest gas flux recorded at the summit in years. 
Scientists at the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory track the jump with a mix of urgency and disbelief, watching their daily graphs leap far above seasonal trends. But the real surprise came when geochemists started analyzing the gas samples in the lab. Dr. James Kawa-Wahikawa, who has spent decades studying the chemistry of Hawaiian eruptions, noticed something strange in the isotope ratios. The summit plumes contained record levels of helium-3, a rare isotope that doesn't come from the crust or shallow magma chambers. Helium-3 is a fingerprint from the Earth's mantle carried up from depths greater than 30 kilometers. It's almost never seen in such concentrations at Kalawea's surface. The lab reports from late September and early October confirmed what the field team suspected. The gas chemistry matched a direct pulse from the mantle plume, not the recycled magma that usually feeds summit eruptions. Alongside the helium-3, the ratios of carbon dioxide to sulfur dioxide also told a story of deep origin. The carbon dioxide to sulfur dioxide values were more than double the long-term average, a sign that the magma had risen so quickly it hadn't lost its deep volatiles to the upper crust. In freshly erupted tephra, olivine crystals trapped microscopic bubbles of gas, tiny time capsules that, under the microscope, revealed undegassed carbon dioxide and volatile signatures consistent with rapid ascent from the base of the lithosphere. Every line of evidence pointed to a surge of magma straight from the mantle, bypassing the usual storage zones and racing toward the surface. For the team at HVO, these findings changed the conversation. The eruption wasn't just the result of gradual pressure buildup or shallow mixing, it was the surface expression of a deep, powerful upwelling, a mantle pulse that had traveled more than 30 kilometers to reach the summit. The chemistry matched the seismic clues, confirming that what was happening beneath Kilauea was unlike any episode in recent memory. The ground was responding to forces far below the reach of most monitoring tools, and the scientists could only watch as the data kept climbing, hinting at a system more dynamic and interconnected than anyone had realized. For decades, the story of Hawaii's volcanoes was simple. Each one was thought to be a solitary giant fueled by its own private reservoir of magma. But the eruption of October 2025 forced scientists to look deeper, literally. In the weeks that followed, researchers at the University of Hawaii, led by Dr. Patricia Valdez, began analyzing seismic data collected across the island. Using advanced tomography, her team mapped the paths of earthquake waves traveling through the earth beneath Kilauea, Mauna Loa, and Hualalai. What they found was startling. Instead of isolated pockets, the models revealed low-velocity zones, regions where seismic waves slow down, threading between the volcanoes at depths of 20 to 50 kilometers. These zones suggested the presence of partially molten rock, forming a hidden network of magma conduits stretching beneath the island. The timing of volcanic unrest added another layer to the puzzle. On October 23rd, just days after Kalawea's fountains reached their peak, a magnitude 3.1 earthquake rattled Hualalai, a volcano that hadn't produced a felt quake in over 10 years. Seismic monitors at Mauna Loa recorded a sharp uptick in activity within a week of Kalawea's eruption. Dr. Kenji Nakamura, a visiting seismologist from Japan, began tracking the patterns. His team identified 14 instances in the 72 hours after the eruption where a seismic event at Kalawea was followed within minutes by a quake under Mauna Loa. The pattern was too consistent to ignore. In a conference call, Nakamura described it as sympathetic seismicity a term for when the stress or movement in one volcanic system appears to trigger a response in another, even miles away. These findings challenged the long-held belief that each volcano operated in isolation. If Kilauea's eruption could send a pulse through the island's underground network, then the risks extended far beyond a single summit. The hazard was no longer just about one volcano waking up, but about a chain reaction that could involve several of Hawaii's giants. For scientists, this was not just a new chapter. It was a whole new book, 
one that demanded urgent study and a rethinking of how volcanic threats are mapped and managed. Ten miles from the eruption's heart, the Torres family wakes each morning to a new set of calculations. Their daughter Emma, eight years old, sits at the kitchen table with her homework while fine ash drifts past the window, settling into every crack. The solar panels on their roof, an $18,000 investment meant to shield them from rising energy costs, are now a liability. Volcanic ash has crept into the wiring and connectors, shorting out the system. The repair bill lands at $4,200, a sum their insurance company refuses to pay. The family's foundation is showing new cracks. Michael Torres, who drives to Hilo Medical Center for his nursing shifts, checks his phone for road closures before he leaves. Each trip on Highway 11 feels uncertain, with the knowledge that a fresh flow could cut off the only route between home and hospital. For families like the Torreses, the volcano is not a distant threat, but a daily presence. The routines of school, work, and errands play out with the constant background of risk. Emergency kits sit by the door, packed and unpacked as official alerts change. On October 20th, the USGS stated that Kalawia's activity had returned to background levels, offering a measure of reassurance. Hours later, a civil defense alert urged residents in several zones to prepare for evacuation, citing ongoing hazards. The conflicting guidance leaves families guessing who's warning to trust. The scientists tasked with monitoring the volcano face their own challenges. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory operates with just 14 full-time staff responsible for five active volcanoes across two islands. Their equipment is aging. 12 seismic stations have outlived their intended lifespan, and three GPS stations failed during the October eruption, creating blind spots just as the ground was shifting most rapidly. An emergency request for $2.3 million in new instruments sits in bureaucratic limbo. The HVO director, in a closed-door briefing, admitted to county officials that if another volcano were to erupt alongside Kilauea, there might not be enough real-time data to forecast the threat. As of early November, lava fountains at Halema Uma'u continue to reach 150 to 300 feet, and sulfur dioxide emissions remain high at around 4,500 tons per day. The ground keeps swelling, and the uncertainty grows. For the people living on Hawaii's youngest land, the only constant is the uneasy balance between vigilance and hope. At 11.47 p.m. on October 18th, 2025, Kilauea's eruption sent lava fountains up to 2,000 feet high, a phenomenon unseen in decades of modern monitoring. This event was documented by the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory, which also recorded 2,400 deep earthquakes and sulfur dioxide emissions quadruple the usual levels in the months prior. Verified lab reports confirmed the influx of magma from mantle depths, while seismic tomography published in October 2025 revealed a vast magma network connecting Kilauea to neighboring volcanoes. Yet scientists still cannot determine exactly how these connections affect eruption timing or scale, and key monitoring equipment remains outdated or offline. The Torres family story and conflicting official alerts highlight the uncertainty faced by 200,000 residents. As of early November, Kilauea continues erupting, ground inflation persists, and deep seismicity is ongoing. The evidence is clear. Hawaii's volcanoes are more interconnected and the risks more complex than once believed. For those living on the island, the only certainty is change.